Hey everyone, in this video I'd like to talk a little bit about my picking technique and my approach to picking on both acoustic and electric guitars. Uh, it's the question I get asked more than any other so I'll, I'll do my best to try and um, cover um, how I pick and also why I pick the way I pick. Um, and hopefully some of you might find it interesting and uh, may even uh, learn something from it too. So I'll start by saying that this video will be mostly me talking about my picking technique. I'll, I'll demonstrate a little bit, but I don't have any picking exercises or patterns or drills or anything like that, as basically I don't really use them. I have one warm-up that I sometimes use before gigs and things like that, which involves like a chromatic scale. Um, but uh, I'm going to do a separate video on that as I don't really think of it as a picking exercise as such. It's more just to get the kind of blood flowing um, before a gig, you know, when you first pick up a guitar. But in terms of actual picking technique, um, I've never really been a fan of kind of the kind of technique patterns or drills or these kind of uh, scale patterns and stuff like that. I don't really enjoy doing that kind of thing. I enjoy just playing the guitar. So everything I know about guitar basically has come from transcribing and learning from other musicians and then spending time with the guitar, just improvising on tunes and just basically mucking around. And I kind of I kind of think of it as kind of technique through repertoire approach where my technique will just follow suit. And uh, obviously I will play at the higher tempos sometimes once I'm warmed up but I won't be doing kind of exercises I'll just be improvising and playing um, and doing that kind of thing rather than drilling things with a metronome uh, so apologies if you clicked on this video expecting um, to see lots of kind of picking exercises that can help you out but I'm going to do my best to explain how I how I pick and uh, hopefully that will be um, That'll be interesting in itself. So when it comes to guitar playing, I don't have any specific rules or systems that I follow. I try and be as flexible as possible and learn from as many different areas of music that I can and kind of mix it all together into my own kind of playing um, approach or voice. Obviously, I have my tendencies and I'll go into detail about what those are and why I use them. Um, but I think it's really important to remember that there are no rules with guitar playing. Uh, we're all just here to learn what we can, learn the things we love, and um, turn them into our own individual voices. Uh, if we all followed the same rule book, we'd all sound the same. So it's really important, I can't stress this enough, that um, don't feel like you have to copy what I do, or even what anybody does. Um, Learn what you can, learn the little um, techniques that you that you think will be good for your playing, but don't feel like you have to do it this way in order to play like that. Um, because you don't want to play like that, you want to play like you. And uh, that's a really, um, that's something I really think is important with guitar playing. So most of the time, my technique would be best described as a tweaked version of what is now known as gypsy picking. Now I say a tweaked version of gypsy picking because I don't actually know what proper gypsy picking is. Um, I hear rules, I've heard people mention things like every um, phrase must start with a downstroke, every new string must be a downstroke, um, all notes must be picked and um, some other things like this and I, I don't think the way I the way I play follows some of these rules but um, it would be best described within the category of kind of um, gypsy picking even if it's not kind of gypsy picking proper so what is gypsy picking 
from what I understand, it's a very old-fashioned way of picking on a guitar. It predates solid-body electric guitars. Uh, we're talking a time when all guitars were acoustic guitars. And if you wanted to be heard, you had to have a strong right-hand technique um, that allowed you to get volume and projection out of your instrument. Now, the term gypsy picking is relatively new from what I understand. I don't think this was um, described as gypsy picking back in Django's day. But as, f as far as I know, this, this was a very popular way of um, playing back then just because it is a very efficient way of getting volume and a strong tone out of your instrument. So once electric guitar pickups were invented and eventually solid body electric guitars came along, this kind of technique fell out of favour amongst guitar players because it was no longer essential to get a really strong, loud tone out of your instrument. Uh, guitarists could use lighter strings and um, techniques like hammer-ons and pull-offs and things like that became more popular and, um, of course, that was the, the birth of um, what is now kind of modern-day electric guitar playing. So... Um, today, basically, this technique is mostly used by gypsy jazz guitar players. Uh, we think Django used this technique back in the day. Um, there are accounts that um, perhaps Charlie Christian picked like this. Um, we know Joe Pass actually picked like this um, because he described it in one of his uh, tutorial videos. And uh, But basically, in today's kind of gypsy jazz world, it's the most common way of picking on an acoustic guitar. So for me, the most important part about this technique is the rest stroke. If you're not familiar with what a rest stroke is, it's when you play a string and you, your pick will rest on the string below. Like this. As opposed to if you're plucking a string. Where it, where it won't be resting on the string below. Now, in order to make the rest stroke uh, more efficient, uh, what we tend to do is bend our wrist away from the guitar. And what this means is your whole, the whole motion can come from your whole lower part of your arm in a kind of twisting fashion. Uh, what you'll find is your pick will be pointing generally um, to your kind of chest area rather than if you were playing with kind of this uh, alternate kind of technique the pick would be at more kind of a right angle with the strings or the top of the guitar if you bend your wrist away the pick naturally kind of starts pointing upwards and the result of that is that when you play a rest stroke you're playing more into the guitar so you're pushing into the guitar more than plucking like this. You're going into the guitar. And you can probably hear. You can get a lot more force into this into each note, and that gives you more volume. Now the great thing about um, this rest stroke uh, technique is the string below will kind of give you something to bounce off in a way. When you play that note, the string below will stop you. And you can kind of rebound off it for your upstroke. Whereas you know you don't get you don't get that when you don't use rest strokes. And that again means you can apply more pressure more force to that string in order to get um, more volume. So the next thing we should talk about when we're playing guitar in this way is the picking directions. Now the way I see it is the picking directions are a byproduct of having our hand in this kind of posture and striking the string in this way. It's important to remember the reason we're doing that is for tone and um, volume and projection. So, 
if we take these few notes as an example, we're going to use a part of an A7 arpeggio. We're going to use on the bottom string, we're going to be playing the fifth fret. Now, that's an A note root. Now, if I play that with this rest stroke technique, and my next note is on the A string, on the fourth fret here, and I've rested on the A string, it makes logical sense to play that A string with another downstroke. Because it would be it would, wouldn't make sense to rest and then come round in order to do an upstroke. If you were alternate picking, you wouldn't rest stroke usually. So you'd play down and then up on the next string. But in this case, we're using this rest stroke technique. We're going to play into the note with a downstroke, and the next note has to be a downstroke, really. It, it just makes logical sense. And so that there is the um, seventh fret. Just to, this is part of the A7 arpeggio. So what we've done there is we've started the, a new string with a downstroke, which is the rule that you often hear people mention with Gypsy picking but we're not adhering to the rule because it's a rule we're doing it because it's logical because of the way we want to strike the string with our right hand likewise if I carry on with the arpeggio um, we're going to go down up on the D string fifth fret seventh fret it's going to be down on the next string now that one is not economy picking but it's just alternate. But, but it's a new string, is a downstroke. Now from this note here, we're going to go to the B string. Now we've just struck that with a downstroke, with a rest stroke. And the B string is here. So we play another downstroke. Just makes sense. It wouldn't make sense to do anything else. It's logical. So we end up with, which technically, every new string we have used a downstroke. But again, it's not because we're following a rule, it's just because it makes logical sense. Now, if we return that arpeggio back down, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Because if we're going, we start with a downstroke here, this is the B string. I'm missing out the top string, um, but we'll go with the B string. Up, so down, up. The next note is on the G string. Down, okay? That just makes sense. But that's a down stroke, and there's only one note on that string. Our next note is on the D string, which is the next one up. Now, we have two options. We could roll our wrist in order to come up with an upstroke, or we could play a double down stroke. Now, for me, it makes more logical sense to do a double down stroke than to completely move our hand position to get the upstroke in, because you can't get an upstroke with this hand position without kind of getting in behind the other string because of the angle of your pick. So you just do a double, a double down stroke. And that's the trickiest part about this um, whole technique really, for at least um, for me, is that, is that double down. And when you first uh, start using this technique, you find um, it's, it's difficult to keep your notes kind of even. You kind of slow down on the, on the double down because of the extra movement. But after a while, you start to develop it and it just becomes like a natural little flick of the wrist. And if you watch this wrist, my wrist position here, it's the, the kind of rolling, um, twisting motion is the same. Whereas if I would have had to do an upstroke there, I would have had to like roll my wrist around in order to get that upstroke in, which is, is less kind of... Um, like it's less economical really than just a little 
flick of a wrist. So, as a result, we end up... We've ended up playing every new string with a downstroke. But again, not because we're following a rule, just because it's logical to do so when you're striking the string in this way. One of the things you find when you use this um, picking technique is it's often easier to rearrange the notes on the fingerboard in order to accommodate your right hand than play lots of consecutive downstrokes. For example, if we were to take an A minor arpeggio, and going up that direction is fine, but when you're coming back down, on an electric guitar, you, you might alternate it like that, or you might sweep it like that. But if you want to gypsy pick those notes, it's often much easier to change the position, change where the notes are on the fingerboard, so that you don't have lots of consecutive double downs. Um, for example, like that, you go down, up, down, down, up, down. rather than okay so that's kind of a little um, kind of uh, one of the kind of tricks to getting this technique to work is you often have to rearrange um, lines on the fingerboard um, in order to, to um, make it all work so one of the interesting things about this picking technique is we often find ourselves following the rule of every new string starts with a downstroke but I think it's really important to remember we are not doing it because we're following the rule. We're doing it just simply because um, the mechanics of your right hand lead us to pick in that way, just because it's most logical. Um, and I'm going to give you an example now of if you just follow the rule blindly, it can lead you into some complications and some difficult picking situations. So I'm going to play this phrase for you. This is all part of A7 arpeggio. Seven. Now, if we were going down stroke on every new string, we'd go like this. Down, 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 up, down. Okay? Now, that would mean you'd play one, two, three down strokes in a row, but also with a skipping over of a string there. Which, at slower tempos, is doable. But if you want to play it faster, it's very difficult. So it makes much more sense to me to start the top string with an upstroke. Because then you're down, up, down, up, down. You end up with essentially alternate picking. Now technically, from what I understand, that wouldn't be gypsy picking. Um, but for me it just makes way more sense to do it like that. So there are some situations that you'll find that following the gypsy picking rule book um, can needlessly overcomplicate things. So I would recommend um, just trying to think logically and, um, and you'll, um, you'll kind of find your own way of picking things that are comfortable for you. So those are the elements of gypsy picking that I personally like to use. Um, but as I said earlier, I'm not strict with it and I don't always stick to it. I'll often find myself using um, like alternate picking without the rest strokes. I sometimes use kind of upward um, rakes or sweeps. Um, I also like to use um, my fingers with the pick, like something like this. So it really does depend on the phrase um, I'm playing and the sound I'm after. So another topic I should talk a little bit about is um, plectrums and what picks I like to use. Uh, picks are a big subject in gypsy jazz. Um, you can get all types of um, different shapes and sizes and materials. And uh, I often think of picks as being like the um, gypsy jazz equivalent of stomp boxes 
Um, whereas an electric guitarist will be collecting, um, you know, overdrives and delays and things. A gypsy jazz guitar player collects different types of picks for different kind of sounds and stuff. Um, but f majority of the time for me, I use these, which are Dunlop Gator Grip. I don't think my camera's going to focus on it, sorry, but um, basically they're two millimeter black uh, Dunlop Gator Grip. And uh, when they're new, they're kind of got this kind of dusty matte finish. And um, basically from new, I find them kind of a bit tricky to play with. Um, personally so I have to um, wear them in and that takes about two to three months of kind of using them in the practice room and then eventually they start to take on um, a bevel like this which hopefully the camera shows and this corner here is the, sh the shape it takes on as opposed to the new corner which is this, which is unused. You can see that. And um, that bevel will be, um, is kind of personalized to my kind of hand position. So um, that's why they say in Gypsy Jazz, you shouldn't lend people your plectrums because um, they might kind of mess the shape up because it's very personalized. Everybody's hand, position, uh, everybody's hand kind of angle will be slightly different and that will change the shape of your plectrums. Now I know some people prefer to use them new and just get used to using them new, but I'm so used to using them worn in that um, yeah, I find them kind of difficult when they're brand new. Occasionally I use the point, um, but I'm mostly using this back corner. And um, what, I, what I tend to do is I think of it almost like um, changing pickup um, position on an electric guitar. You go from the from a kind of warmer sound like that, and I'll flip it in my hand, and then I'm onto the point, and that will give me that will give me kind of two different tones, and um, you get a more kind of sharper sound out of the point. Um, but it's a little more tricky to play. I find it harder to play accurately with the point because my kind of my feel, my the feel of the strings um, is more um, natural for me on the rounded edge. It doesn't catch the strings so much. It kind of glides through the strings easier. But yeah, I'll, I'll use that in conjunction with moving up and down. So you get a warmer sound here, you get a treblier sound here, and then you can flip the pick and just go down to the bridge and get a really really sharp sound or you flip back to the rounded edge and play closer to the neck and you get a warmer sound so that's kind of how I do it um, and so basically because I can only really play these personalized worn-in ones I've tried to have them made I've tried copying them with sandpaper and I've never been able to get the right bevel that just works for me. They always feel strange unless they've been actually worn in by me playing them. So as a result, um, I've always got a couple on the go. So I've got my kind of the one I use on a gig, and then I'll get one that's kind of halfway there, and then I'll have a new one. And then when I'm practicing at home, I'll be swapping between them, and I'll, you know, and uh, gradually start making new picks. And so now I've got a little tin here with about kind of 10 years worth, well actually probably about 8 years since I've been using this type of pick worth of um, <laughs> of picks and these are like the most valuable thing to me because they can't be replaced um, I can buy new guitars but I just can't figure out how to get these <laughs> made and uh, this is one actually I used for two and a half years. For two and a half years I only used one plectrum and um, this was it and I, I wore a bevel in both back corners. don't know if you can see that there and there. Sorry the lighting is not great close to the camera and also I started to wear away the pointed end as well into a bevel as well and that is my kind of most prized possession 
um, when it comes to guitar gear because that I don't know I, I was actually speaking to a friend recently about trying to get um, using uh, 3d printing to scan that and then get them replicated because that would be something I'd re be really interested in doing um, but for now I'm just wearing them in and uh, this is what, what have I got here yes yeah, so they're the three I've got going on at the moment that one's gig ready this one's kind of there as well and then this one's a newer one which I'm gradually starting to get the shape on now I do have other picks obviously I do like collecting different picks and for different tones and occasionally I'll go back to these I I used these when I first got into gypsy jazz this is um I believe they're called wagon or it could be vegan or vegan I'm not quite sure the pronunciation of it but that's a three and a half mil I used those for the first couple of years of playing gypsy jazz so yeah I've probably been using these maybe like yeah maybe eight to ten years but for the first couple of years it was these and uh, I still use that when I want a really kind of really loud kind of sound maybe on a jam session or something like that uh, I like that pick that's a guzz I'm not sure if they make these anymore but the thing I like about this pick is it's designed to use all three corners they've got little um, dots there to you've got the first one here and then you got that's the third one and then the second one and so they've got a different bevel on each corner which I really like and um, I love this rounded edge here for rhythm sounds really nice and warm um, and I've got some various different types um, occasionally I'll use uh, this type just a regular medium kind of pick um, you get more click out of a pick like this more kind of pick noise um, which you might sometimes like especially if you're like strumming which I don't really do on this type of guitar but if I'm on a kind of a folk flat top guitar you get nice kind of that kind of arpeggiated open chord sound often sounds better with a pick with a bit of bend to it which I, I like that one there but also like this one I forget what they call this pick here but um, but that's got a really nice snap to it you can even hear it I'll put it by the mic so that makes it really nice for a certain kind of sound. Another thing I love about these thinner picks is you get a bit of this scraping sound, which you don't always want, but if you, uh, that's the kind of sound I quite like sometimes. It's almost like a uh, snare drum. Um, and it works, I like that. I like to use these thinner picks on electric guitars because um, you can do this kind of thing. And uh, also they, they work they work kind of better with lighter strings sometimes. So like on my Les Paul, I'll sometimes use this type of pick. Um, but yeah, that's basically the picks that, um, that I use. So something I would like to mention is the reason why I use this kind of uh, picking technique. Obviously, gypsy picking and um, this kind of rest stroke technique is a good way of getting volume out of your instrument and that works particularly well with this type of guitar um, with the longer scale length the Selma Macberry type guitar or gypsy guitar um, but volume is not the reason why I like this type of technique um, when I play I try and picture myself in a studio recording so the idea of playing really loud is not very important to me but what is important to me is dynamic range and the, the uh, rest stroke technique allows you to really accent certain notes which gives your um, playing a greater dynamic range um, when I play lines I like my notes to have kind of ups and downs and peaks and troughs rather than being kind of even or anything like that occasionally you know I might, I might want that kind of machine gun like um, even uh, sound but that's not my usual kind of go-to sound when I'm just kind of improvising on jazz standards or something I want my notes to have this kind of bounce to them I 
want the loud notes, quiet notes to kind of be bouncing off each other and I want to be able to use the downstroke to accent notes, which is why sometimes I'll use downstrokes in um, random places as a way of just accenting a note, even if it's not necessarily the logical way of picking. Um, but I really enjoy the fact that I can have a note that's, that's loud and I can mix that with hammer-ons, pull-offs, slides, slurs, these kind of things. Um, Um, and then I can kind of try and make my playing have this kind of um, dynamic kind of uh, flutter or bubble to it. And, and that's what I love about this technique. And this is why I use, this is why I pick in this way. That's the, that's the main reason. And um, I'll talk a little bit about electric guitar in a sec as well. But I also use a very similar kind of picking approach on electric guitar. And that's for the same reason. Um, it's for this dynamic range and the ability to accent notes like a drummer might do on a snare drum where they might accent you know the first note of a beat a bar or something like that I kind of treat it in the same way so little hammer-ons and slides are, are quiet I'm, I'm kind of over exaggerating in a way here but um like my notes if I, I always think if I, if I look at my playing on like um on a recording software like on Pro Tools on a waveform I'd like to see it have lots of ups and downs and be very dynamic and so that's what I want um, my playing to be like okay so I'll briefly mention about uh, how I'll play on a guitar like this archtop hollow um, guitar this is an Ibanez uh, AF 75 I believe um, now basically on a guitar like this, I'll play with the same technique that I would use on a gypsy guitar. Um, they've got big hollow body, um, so your hand position is the kind of same. Um, your, I generally don't play any gain on this type of guitar, so um, I don't have to worry about um, muting the strings at the bridge. So I can have my hand in exactly the same kind of posture as I would on a gypsy guitar. Now obviously the sound is different on a guitar like this, it's not plugged in at the moment, but, um, but uh, when plugged in you get a different tone than a gypsy guitar, so that will affect like the notes you choose and the phrases you play and stuff like that. But in terms of just the way you strike the strings and my technique, it'll basically be um, the same as on a gypsy guitar or even a flat top acoustic guitar. So when it comes to solid body electric guitars, uh, I mainly play Strats and Les Pauls. If you can see that, these, these two here. Um, when I play this type of guitar, I'll use a very similar picking technique to the kind of thing I would do on an acoustic guitar, but it is slightly tweaked. Um, one of the reasons is because often if I'm using gain, which I often do if I'm in a kind of blues rock kind of setting which I, I really like playing that kind of music when you play that um, with gain you you have to worry about your strings ringing out you know so you have to be kind of in a position where you can mute at the bridge palm mute you know just to stop the ringing and um, and to control all of that so my hands kind of a bit closer than it would be on a, on a kind of gypsy guitar um, but my general picking tends to be very similar. I like um, rest strokes. I like f the accents it gives me, as mentioned before, on the gypsy guitar. But especially on the guitar with single coils, like this. Um, and if you play with a slightly cleaner sound, they come out, the accents really come out more. More so than on a Les Paul, say, with a bit more gain. Uh, where, the, where the tone is compressed, so the accents that you play are um, less pronounced, they're kind of flattened out more. Um, so that's why I love strats with this kind of clean, um, hairy, kind of slightly dirty sound. 
I just love the, that kind of tone and um, it's great for that kind of blues sound. <laughs> So when I play this way, uh, I do use this, I'll often use double downstrokes and downstrokes in um, weird places in order to get the right accents together. Um, but there is often with uh, playing electric guitar, I'll um, revert almost back to the kind of technique that I used when I was um, a kid and a teenager, when I played only blues and rock guitar. And that's when I play this certain kind of licks um, or um, t a certain style of playing this kind of minor pentatonic uh, rock blues kind of stuff. <laughs> Often when I play those kind of licks, um, I find it easier to use alternate picking, um, which is how I would have picked back in the day. So um, I'll, I'll go, I'll bounce back and forth depending on what I'm playing. That kind of playing often involves a lot of pull-offs and hammer-ons as well, you know? Um, and slides and stuff like that. So uh, it tends to be a bit more work on the left hand than the right hand, so I don't really think too much about how I'm picking it. I just try and, um, just try and make it work. Um, but then if I'm playing more of a line... Um, that will be a very similar picking approach to how I would do it on a gypsy guitar, but usually with my wrist slightly closer to the bridge, um, just so I'm ready to, to control the strings if need be. So I should just quickly mention, while I've got my Strat out, on this guitar I tend to use um, the 2mm Dunlop pick, the same as I would on a gypsy guitar. Um, this guitar I usually string up with 11s and uh, I've got another strap that I is kind of tucked in back there which is uh, sonic blue with a rosewood um, fingerboard. That one I usually use with 10s because um, I can never decide with strats what gauge strings I like. Um, I like the 11s for their kind of um, their kind of attack and they work really well for clean stuff. <laughs> Um, but uh, I find tens work really well for uh, if you're using more kind of hammer-ons and using a bit more gain as well and you like to bend a bit more up high. Um, that's what I tend to do that more on the other strap. So yeah, basically, usually this kind of pick, um, but I will sometimes use a medium, regular, kind of whatever, 0.73, I think they're 0.73 um, Dunlop, um, or, or any kind of medium um, plectrum with a bit of snap to them. So the other type of guitar that I use a lot is a Les Paul and this is my main Les Paul. It's a Gecko Burst um, Les Paul Standard from around 2004 and um, of all the kind of guitars that I play regularly the Les Paul usually is the one with the shortest scale length. Um, apart from the ukuleles, but um, the scale length is between the nut and the bridge and on a Les Paul I believe it's 24 and 3 quarters and then the Strat is next with 25 and a half and then the Gypsy guitar has a longer scale length again I'm not sure the exact measurement of the Gypsy guitar and I usually use tens on my Les Paul and as a result of my um, main guitars the Les Paul is the one with the um, lowest tension. It's the loosest feel on the strings. And as a result, that lends itself um, to that kind of rock blues kind of style that involves a lot of bending of strings. And I think that's probably why um, it's so popular amongst uh, rock and blues guitar players. Um, Les Pauls have uh, humbuckers as well, which um, slightly compress the sound and usually have a higher output so it means they're pushing the front end to the front end of the amp a little bit more and that in turn is giving you a bit more compression as well so as a result you get a bit more sustain out of a Les Paul and which is also very useful when you're bending strings because when you bend a string you know it's going to hold for a bit longer but you tend to play Les Pauls with a with a higher gain um, they, they I really like them clean as well. I On my Les Pauls generally I have a out phase mod here 
which gives you that kind of Peter Green clean sound. Um, and Peter Green's one of my biggest heroes, so I use that kind of sound quite a lot. But um, what's probably the most common thing to do on a Les Paul is whack it on the bridge pickup with a bit of overdrive and... Um <laughs> and um, play kind of rock blues type stuff and it's great for that and so when I play in that kind of way I tend to play more with my hand resting on the bridge um, because you end up with this all this kind of noise and being able to control it a little bit is useful and also with a lot of those kind of um, rock licks you know um, <laughs> Um, I tend not to use gypsy picking so much on that. I tend to use more alternate picking. And um, alternate picking is easier to do with your hand on the bridge, at least I find. Um, because the rest stroke technique is much easier when your hand's away from the bridge. But uh, another thing with that kind of picking style is that that's kind of how I played more when I was a teenager. And back then I used to use more kind of alternate picking. It was before I was into kind of gypsy jazz stuff. So that's the kind of thing I might do on a Les Paul sometimes and when I use, when I play in that way, that's generally when I'm not going to be using gypsy picking. Although when I play single lines, um, I'll sometimes go to a kind of gypsy picking. Go to the kind of uh, rest stroke technique. But one thing I will say about Les Pauls, and a little bit with strats but more so with Les Pauls, they, when you play in that kind of... Um, that kind of blue style when you're bending lots of strings for me it feels a bit more comfortable with the guitar on a strap and slightly lower down than you would have you know if you were sitting where it's kind of chest height when I play it on a strap it'll be slightly low and it doesn't need to be like down by your ankles or anything but just a, a little lower feels more comfortable to kind of grab the neck and use those kind of bends and that kind of playing and when the guitar is lower like that, it's also more difficult to use a gypsy picking technique because gypsy picking for me works best when my arm's a bit more raised up, which is why it feels so good in like an acoustic. And then obviously you can do it on a Les Paul, like so. But once the guitar's down here, it's less comfortable. So, um, so that's another reason why I kind of revert to a an alternate picking style um, when I play kind of more on the rock side of things um, and specifically on Les Paul type guitars. So I think that about covers it all really. Um, I've tried to cover as many elements of my picking technique um, across uh, the different guitars that I like to use regularly. Obviously it is quite gypsy jazz um, heavy because a lot of my technique um, comes from playing gypsy jazz and also I, I kind of didn't cover alternate picking um, in a lot of great depth because um, I'm not a real expert on it to be honest um, when I was younger playing um, electric guitars rock and blues and stuff I never really thought about picking technique uh, it's not something I really started consciously working on until you know I started learning gypsy jazz and suddenly it was like there's this technique that um, might be useful but before that I didn't really I didn't really think about it so I don't I don't I don't think my technique on electric guitar is particularly good to be honest but it, it does it allows me to play in the way I want to play which is that kind of more um, more bluesy rocky kind of sound um, at least on the solid body guitars but I don't have great kind of facility on the electric to do kind of 
crazy kind of shred stuff. Um, but anyway, if there's any questions or if I've missed anything, feel free to drop me a comment below or drop me a message or whatever and I'll do my best to answer anything and I can always make up a follow-up video and cover anything that I've missed. So yeah, hopefully you've uh, learned something and hopefully uh, you found it interesting and thanks for sticking around and I'll see you next time.